Hi everyone. In this session we're going to be having a look at Desktop Paint. One of the things about Desktop Paint is that you will find it in the interface in either Flame or Smoke. The main thing to know about the way Desktop Paint functions is that it is a raster based or bitmap based paint tool. What that means basically is if we were to go into the paint module and start doing brush strokes, the strokes that you create are pretty much instant. So if you were to exit the paint tool, the strokes are created straight away. So there's no rendering involved when painting with this. It is actually a bitmap based paint tool. So as soon as you paint your stroke, it then creates the frame instantly on the system. The way the desktop paint works is you can either go in with nothing. You can go in with a front, a fill, a foreground or a background, a foreground with a mat or an alpha, or a foreground, back, or alpha or mat. What this means is you can do a variety of things using the paint tool. So let's go ahead and first start off by going in with just a front. Taking the red cursor, let's select the top left of the clip and enter into the paint tool. The paint tool module is divided up into the bottom third of the screen. If I need more real estate to carry on painting, I can either swipe left or I can swipe right, and that will then bring up the tools or decrease the tools when I'm working and painting on my shot. You can, however, zoom into the image as well as zoom out and select your home base so you can get as accurate or as close as you like within your image. Now one of the first things we're going to have a look at is the type of modules that you have inside of paint. And this can sometimes lead to confusion when people first see paint. Inside of paint you have got three menus. You have the paint menu, you have the graphics menu, and you have the cutout menu. Each one does a specific function. We're going to concentrate on the paint menu for a while and inside the paint menu you've got a variety of different options. The canvas painting tools, which is the menu you're currently looking at here, is the one which gives us a free form painting brush. So when I draw, my strokes are pretty much free form. Geometry simply adds in the option to create line drawings. So when I go ahead and drag a line, you can see how it draws it on my screen straight away. And this gives you various different options, such as creating rectangle shapes, circular shapes, as well as free form shapes and triangles. So you can very easily create different types of basic shapes for when you're doing painting. Underneath this you have the auto paint tool. The auto paint tool is one of paint's hidden little gems which allows you to do things like create brush strokes over time and do things such as wire removal, pattern generation, texture creation. There's a whole range of other things you can do. The menu beneath that is the fill menu which stands pretty much for what it does. It says it fills the image with a color and then you have the rolling menu. The rolling menu is a nice little tool which allows you to physically roll the frame when you are painting. This is not a tool for doing animation. It is pretty much a tool where you can go ahead and accurately work on the edge of a picture. So this could be used to maybe fix the edges where you may have a problem or it could also be used to view and create a seamless texture. So if you wanted to create a texture that was constantly moving around and rolling, or perhaps you want to tile it, you could actually use the rolling tool to see that the edges of the picture at the top, the bottom, the left and the right, all align up and match accurately. So for example, if I was to now go ahead and uh, let's say paint a stroke across all the frames there, if I now go back and reset the rolling tool, you will see that it then affects all the edges. So now I have got a seamless rolling texture when I have my paint. So you can see just by rolling it, you've got that type of effect. It's a very practical tool to help you accurately fix edges or it could be used in a creative method which will allow you to go ahead and create seamless textures that continually roll and tile across the screen. Coming back to the canvas tools, some of the things we'll have a look at is some of the basic tools that you have. So firstly you've got the brush attributes. Now you may think to yourself, well what is the use of the brush attributes to me? Well by default the brush attributes give you your basic paint strokes and give you your basic controls to paint. However, they do have a whole bunch of different options which can creatively control the way the paintbrush is applying itself. So for example, you can see that the size of the brush is set to constant. So if we go ahead and make the brush size a little bigger, obviously when I paint, the brush size is going to be a lot larger. However, if we open up the constant menu, you will see that you've got control over the brush size based on various different properties. So for example, we can switch the brush size to be based on pressure. So this is the pressure in which the tablet is being applied through the pen. So if I was to draw very lightly, you'll see a very small brush. And if I was to push very hard, you can see I've now created a much larger brush shape. This is all down to pressure. 
So if you're used to drawing on a pen and paper and you know you push the pen harder, you get more ink out of it. It's the same thing if you draw lighter. So you can really control the way things work. Now, this isn't just for size. This is for rate, for pressure, for a tool called jitter, direction, and roll. So those are the various options you've got. In addition to this, you've also got direction. And what this means is when I draw either left, right, up, or down, you can see that the brush shape changes. This could be for maybe a type of calligraphy effect you may want to create, or maybe when you're painting, you want to create a specific type of look. This is quite handy. Then you have these odd-looking ones. You've got front, back, saved, and result. What these are referring to is these are referring to the images that you load into the paint module. So for example, this background here was actually loaded as a front image. So when I select it set to front, the size of the brush is going to be different based on the luminance of the front image. You will see that my brush size will vary based on the luminance of the picture. So you can see when the brush went across the dark areas, it went very small. Across the brighter areas, it went very big. So this is controlling the luminance of my image. Now this could be very useful for really applying your brush in certain areas. But you could also set it to use the back area to go ahead and control the size of the brush. So let's just come out the paint tool for just a moment. And this time I'm going to call up the paint tool and we're going to choose front and back back is being the pattern that I'm going to be using. Now this time I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to choose a black frame as my foreground. So I'm going to be painting on a black frame. However, the back reference is going to be this picture of the Colosseum. So let's load this back into the paint tool and now you can see I've got a clean black frame. Taking the size of the brush this time, let's set it to back. So now when I paint, you can see that the size of the brush is being constantly based on what is happening in the background plate. To see the background plate, just press F2 and you can see it temporarily. If I would like to overlay the background plate on top of this image just to see how it looks and how it lines up, very simply you could just come down to the bottom left of your screen and change the option from matte to back and turn on show. This will give you an onion skinning result. And like I said before, you can now see how the brush strokes are actually being controlled by the luminance or the brightness of the background, which in this case is adjusting the size. I'm just going to go ahead and wipe the slate clean. So I've now got a clean frame, which is a clean black frame. And we're going to use some of the other options that you've got. So the size of the brush, once again, is based on the background. This time, let's go ahead and play with the rate. So this time, if I now paint, you can see how the brush will also be affected. You'll also note that I can combine all the different brush attributes together to create my different results for me. So, for example, you could control things like pressure as well. One other little tool that you have here is a tool known as Jitter. And what the Jitter tool will allow you to do is it allows you to control how the brush is spread out when you paint across an image. So by default, it's off. So when I paint across the screen, you can see I have a nice clean line. If we turn Jitter on to constant, for example, if I paint with constant, you can see that it is scattering the brush stroke as it draws across the screen. If we set this to use the background plate, so we're going to use the brightness or luminance of the background when I now draw, you can see that we're getting completely different results. So you can see just how much control you have over the various different brush attributes to create a specific look, a specific type of design using here inside the paint tool. Now let's take this up a level. Currently you've seen me just draw one brush stroke and adjust the attributes to get a specific look. But let's go ahead and bring auto paint into the equation. Auto paint is a very powerful tool as I mentioned earlier and it allows you to go ahead and do a variety of things. You actually have three options, wipe, random and user. We're going to concentrate on the wipe tool. What happens is auto paint can be used to literally wipe your brush attributes with your brush across your entire image. Let's have a look at this. So out here on the desktop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load in our front image. So here we have two characters that we want to paint over. With the Auto Paint tool set to Wipe, you can see I've got various brush attributes. These are the default standard. If I just go ahead and click on the image, you can see how it just wipes across my entire screen. However, if we start playing around with the settings, say for example, I want to use the same luminance of this image to control my brush size, when I click on the screen, you can see that I get a completely different result. It's kind of like a psychedelic result. So this could be very useful. We could adjust, for example, the front for the uh, size of the brush, the rate, the pressure, the jitter, so on and so forth. And each one of these will give me a different look.
Now one of the things that you could do is you could either use the wipe tool to do this and you can wipe in different directions and each direction will give you a different result. Alternatively you could also go ahead and use the random option and the random option allows you to literally wipe using random samples on the screen. This will still respect the brush attributes inside the actual paint module but it spreads them out a different way. Now I'd like to carry on using the wipe option because that gives us a really nice result but I only want to limit the wipe to apply itself to the characters. So the way we can do this is instead of just using the front on its own we're going to use a mat. So if I come out of the paint tool you can see that I already have a mat here inside my scene and we'll go ahead and choose the option to use the front and the mat. We'll choose our foreground option, we'll choose our mat option and we load this up into the paint tool. One thing to mention is if I look at the mat, and this is how we look at it by pressing F3, you can see that the mat is actually inverted. It's not the regular type of mat. This means that whatever falls within the black area of the mat will get painted. The white area is being held back. So this time if I say right, we want to go ahead and wipe and we tell the system to use the mat. When we apply the wipe tool, you will now see how it's only applied itself to this portion of the image which has been restrained by the mat. The one thing about the auto paint tool is when you click on the screen to apply the auto paint it paints it directly onto the first frame. Now if I just hit undo it removes the auto paint stroke and if I just scrub through this I would like to apply the auto paint across all these frames. Now one nice tip to know is that you can use one frame just to kind of preview to see what it's like. Once I'm happy with that I simply just hit undo so that I can then get back to the original frame. If I didn't undo and I hit process it would paint the same stroke twice on the first frame. So I only want to have it nice and clean. So just undo that paint stroke. Once we're happy and we're ready to go, we simply hit process. And what the system will do is we'll then go through each and every frame and apply the auto paint stroke. It will adjust itself once again based on the luminance and highlights of the image. And then the mat that's also animated with the image will then apply itself so that it doesn't lose its effect. So here you can see how we've created a really cool psychedelic effect using the auto paint tool. This is just one of the many little functions that we'll touch on through our exploration of the paint tool, but hopefully it's enough to get you excited and started and playing around with this fantastic, exciting tool.